Okay, guys, um, we're making progress on the renovation of the Bridgeport machine. Ran into some snags, some little snags. Well, they're, they're, they're kind of big to me. I don't know if they're little to a professional, you know, machine rebuilder, but to me, they're the end of the world, right? Um, where do I start? Where do I start? Let's start with where I am. I took out the spindle out of here. Sorry, not the spindle. I took out the drawbar out of here. And the drawbar is here. I wanted to look at the spindle, okay? I also took the adjustable motor disc off of the motor. And first issue I came and ran up to was if we look here, that's cracked. It's cleanly cracked too. Strange, almost like, like a manufacturing defect. But there's a little recess right here and it's cracked along here. So that's issue number one. Number two, let's make this number three because I'm gonna get into this a little bit more detail. But this is the drawbar. If you're wondering what your drawbar looks like for your Bridgeport, that's what it is. Um, now, look at the gap in here. Well, first, let's look straight down at it. See that protrusion? Now, this is twisted. You see in that hole, which we can't see because it won't focus, there's a pin in there, and that pin is rightly <laughs> broken. That's a great angle right there. This is why ignorance is bliss. If you don't know that this is an issue, then you don't mess with it. And you'll probably move on with life and it'll probably work for another couple years. But I like preventative maintenance. I always like the videos where they clean up the machine and, you know, I think we all do. They clean it up, they hose it down, they, they make it shiny. But for me, I, I, want, it, I, I, want, I want to do the guts. I want to change things because I this is an old machine. It's it's old. You don't know any of the history unless you know maybe you do. But for me, I don't know the history of this. I got this from an auction, and I don't know any of the the how it was used. There's some clues like the ways on on everywhere and how much plays and things, how much backlash and so on and so forth. But truly, you don't know how much. It was used, abused, things replaced. And I like to give like a fresh start for some of the more critical areas so that, you know, like the bearings in here, if you have too much slop in your spindle, you can get bad finishes. So, or it's more difficult. <sighs> Enough rambling. Now, this portion here, this is the adjustable variable speed. It has a spring. You normally put two screws in here that is from this bottom plate on this portion, this plate, that's where it came from. And you normally take two of these screws and you put it here to compress this spring to put it back together. And when these bolts are done doing its job, this, this clip, which I probably lost now, um, this clip, basically goes on top of here and clips into this groove, right? And it has a Woodruff, uh, a key, not a Woodruff key, but a key that holds the whole thing aligned. Let's go over here. It's the only place left I really got a, got a space. Now, this is the guide for renovating your bridge port. It's a 2J head and I also have the operation and maintenance manual. I recommend you get it for any machine that you get. If you're looking to buy one, make sure you can find some reference material. Vintage Machinery, I think it's called, with Keith. Um, he has a great website with a lot of old machines and it's a collaboration of different people that help give into information to help you rebuild and refresh these machines because we got to keep it alive, right? Um, but 
enough on that. So this is the assembly we were just talking about with the motor adjustable, blah, blah, blah. Now, these lower bushings are normally fairly straightforward and easy to replace. But I have a paper that H&W gave and I highlighted a section. I will read it. If the motor variable disc bushings are blue or teal in color, like mine, you will have to replace the entire motor variable disc assembly. Yeah, so <laughs> I wanted to know more about it. So I went into the book and the book also talks about if it's noisy and has a lot of vibration, the bushings is the reason why. So it's a pretty critical plastic piece. I spoke to Barry, which is the um, CEO of H&W, and he said that you can get these, but they're difficult to install, and a lot of times you have to machine this out. Now, I don't want to do that. So this whole thing I'm going to get from him, it's about $250, as of today's prices anyway. It's $250. It comes with... New, um, a new spring, which I have somewhere. Yeah, here. Um, comes with a new spring that goes over like this. New studs. Now, if you remember earlier in the video, I said that there was a problem with this, with um, threading in one of the holes. I'm figuring that I could have just chased this out, but this is what came in the kit, and this is what I have. This table is getting full <laughs> so I am I'm probably gonna start putting some stuff together just to clear out the table like uh, pressing this bearing well this is the old bearing this is the new one press this into this well this into this and leave that to the side and then clean up some stuff and pair things off and here's got glue so I gotta remove the glue and get this going. So what I'm using is this Goxwe. Yeah, it comes with a nice little kit. It's got a chuck on it, a key chuck, which is one of the reasons it appealed to me. It was also cheap and it'll do what we need to do. So you can see I already started. Let's see if this is in the camera. It's dark, but. I already started in that hole. So, gonna do the rest and keep it moving. All right, so we got that clean. Now we just gotta worry about in here. So, get some light on the situation. Uh, I don't know if that made it better or worse, but right in there, got to get that cleaned up. So and we're doing the variable disc so that we can put these new bushings in, which require a clean surface from all other glue, as well as um, this helps keep everything in line. So. We're gonna use this as well. Okay guys, so in looking at the manual, I already pressed in this sealed bearing. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but I pressed this in. This moves nicely. Uh, I'm going to wrap this up and put it to the side. I've cleaned the inside not where the race sits. I lightly polished that with a lint-free rag and uh, press this in. It moves smoothly. So this is done. Now, I have this sanded. So what my plan is, these are the old bushings. Um, these are the new ones. Now, if you were to look on H&W's uh, video, they, they give a, a good view of how this is replaced, but I'm going off of the manual. 
guide to renovating. I did, as he did, score up this portion, but the manual actually also says to take your new bushings and give it a sand so that there's some tooth. I'm going to leave the plastic on, mix it up here, and then put it in here. I also sanded this so to give it some bite. And I'm gonna cut this and do it up now. All right, uh, off camera, I coated this with some Molly Lube and we got the bushings in place and I cleaned up all the excess. So now this should just slide in, I guess. All right, there we go. That's it. Well, that was, yeah, that was, that was it. I'm gonna start disassembling the, the spindle and then get that out and I'm gonna drop the knee and if needed, I can loosen these bolts and then pivot the head where you can't actually see anything of what I'm pointing to. So I'm gonna loosen these bolts and then pivot the head this way so I can get the spindle out and that should work, I think. That'll be next time. Thanks, see ya.